So to begin with, uh, today I'm just going to walk you all through how we scaled GitOps using Argo CD, uh, specifically application sets. So my first question goes, how many of you all are aware of GitOps? And how many use Argo CD? OK, that's good. So I'm, I'm a DeSouza. I'm a co-founder of Odyssey Cloud. We provide DevOps SaaS services to our clients. And we help them make sense of the extensive cloud native landscape. Today, I'm going to walk you all through our journey, what we implemented for our client, Southern Cross Stereo, uh, for the listener product. And today's agenda is what was the problem we faced, why we chose Argo City, what was its business value, the discovery phase and the struggles we had during it, why we migrated to AppSets finally after a POC phase, and how to make it production ready. The first part, the problem. So one thing that you're going to find is the configuration drift that people tend to have during uh, implementation. Uh, if you have an issue in production, um, there is you implement a solution, you fix the problem. There are always this one-off chances that you forget to reintegrate that solution back into your code or back into your dev setup. Four months later, back to the issue. The next part is auditability. Who made this change? Why did they make this change? When did they make this change? And finally, all the, your CI/CD pipelines, uh, there are loads of them. You have to have roll forward, roll backs, change of versions, uh, creating a release name, all these different pipelines within your respective setup. And last but not least, security. Who all has access to production? Uh, do they need access to production? And how we can ensure we reduce that? The benefits. You reduce downtime. Uh, you can use Argo CD with Argo rollouts to implement canary tests and canary deployments. Uh, so that is your screen test. If you have just 2%, 5%, people will let you know if your latest release has an issue. And that's how you would figure it out. You prevent configuration drift. If it's not in code, it's not real. And finally, it's the visual information for developers. Kubernetes is very extensive and confusing for developers. They do not need to necessarily understand everything, but they can start making sense of it when they look at how the resources look on a UI. The POC phase. We started off with Argo CD applications, uh, just creating plain Jane application CRDs. And we found that it's not really maintainable. Uh, there's too much of maintenance overhead in scaling it to 20, 50 applications. The next is the app of app patterns. Uh, initially, we did discover the app of app patterns, which was the simplest way to deploy it. And we found that you need to have a single primary app. You'll have multiple secondary apps. And your primary app, when you deploy it, it will deploy all the remaining ones. It still meant you need to have the code for the remaining secondary apps or your child apps. And we did not want to go through that. And then came application sets. The reason I love cloud native and open source so much is this was discovered during one of our catch ups with the um, organizer of Ortelius. It's another open source platform. And he told us that there is this particular uh, application set, which is part of Argo CD. It's in beta phase. We were not aware of it. And that's where I discovered about application sets. So what are app sets? App sets are simplifying your deployment life cycles. You can deploy to multiple custom, uh, clusters simultaneously. You are going to continue to maintain your GitOps approach. The main part of application sets is you have certain things called providers. So the first provider is an SCM provider generator. What that does, it scans your entire GitHub or GitLab organization. You can specify subgroups, uh, you know, child projects, et cetera, and it will scan that entire thing based on the structure you create. We put something called paths exist, 
which only searches for that folder. If that folder exists, it tries and performs an automatic GitOps deployment. Then you have the Git generator. This is for monorepos. If you have multiple applications within your setup, this is what you're gonna leverage. And finally, the matrix generator. Uh, this is where it combines two generators to basically form an extensive framework, and it helps you deploy multiple applications and multiple clusters, um, et cetera. So in this case here, you can see that we are deploying or bootstrapping our entire Kubernetes infrastructure, all the tools that we need through one single repo, deploying it on dev, staging, prod, et cetera. And finally, lessons learned. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> so the production setup. This is currently how the production setup looks. We have a separate non-prod orchestrator and a prod orchestrator. Prod orchestrator only manages your production deployments, your staging, your pre-prod. You want to consider all of them as one setup because your staging and pre-prod should be similar to prod. And you have your non-prod orchestrator which manages the dev setup. So now it goes to bootstrapping your cluster. How do you ensure that your respective non-prod orchestrator has access to everything? So that's where specifically we basically use workload identities specific to GCP, but you can do this in any cloud provider, AWS and Azure has its own specific configuration. You have to just make sure that you configure the two respective tools to access all your respective setups and you're good to go. You can also use ingresses, so we prefer to use external ingress and not depend on Nginx for the bootstrapped cluster. That's because you don't need to rely on Nginx in order to access it, unless you don't want the UI to be available. Argo CD wall plugin. We found this to be very handy. Uh, so external operator is great. We, we did initially begin with that, and it's great if you want to write back secrets to Vault. But if you're not necessarily writing back to Vault, you'll find that Argo CD Vault plugin covers most of your setup that you require. It will translate the secrets and provide it to you directly into your cluster without you having to mention it within your GitOps setup. And finally, secrets management. You can set up a GitHub or a GitLab template where you mention how to access all your repositories and whatever it has access to, it will get through this secret management uh, cluster credentials and repository credentials. Last and not least is the webhook for GitLab and GitHub. So developers don't like waiting for the deployment to happen. So if you want to ensure that it's a push and pull based setup rather than just a pull based setup based on your security posture, you can implement this and this will automatically kick off a sync as soon as someone pushes code. Here you have the Argo CD uh, cluster setup. So when you're setting up for connecting to dev and staging, these are some of the roles and configuration you need to perform on your respective cluster in order to let it access all the different clusters across environments. And last and not least is, this is the format we use. We use an SCM Mono repo provider along with the list provider in order to bootstrap our cluster right from the get-go. So that installed pretty much all observability tools that we needed, DNS infra, et cetera. So whatever you require, this will take care of it. This will implement all of it. And managing everything using environment names, you use your cluster, repo, and environment name combined. So this is how it would look. So you have a feature branch, it will mention what's your product name, it will mention what's the environment, and it simplifies the visual, uh, how it looks to your developers. Last but not least is OIDC integration. This simplifies how your developers have access to your respective Argo setup. So you can limit what permissions they have. They can only have view permissions. You could potentially give them sync permissions depending on who you're giving what permissions. And that's a wrap. Thank you. <laughs>